Sponsoring today's video, we have our monthly sponsor, GVG Mall, offering you a Windows 10 Pro serial key for only $17, and if you use my SKAG code, you get 20% off, lowering the price to $13. After the payment, you'll receive the key in no time, and you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings, and BAM! You have an activated system. Hey, old man. Give me everything. Oh, oh, call an ambulance! Call an ambulance! But not for me! Hello guys, it's Shitkin Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco, and welcome to my channel. In this video we'll talk about the possible causes of your PC overheating, for example CPU, uh, GPU, uh, etc you'll see later in the video uh the possible causes and the ways to fix those possible causes if it is a cause it gets uh to be a problem and then we fix the problem possible ways to fix that problem okay <laughs> and that's basically it yeah simple let's go to the video the part you really want to see the explanation We all at some point in life as PC gamers had an overheating system and that's prone to happen to people that just entered the PC world. But rejoice my friends because in this video I'll show you the possible causes and ways to fix them. High temperatures are most commonly noticed when you hear noises coming from your computer, usually the high RPM fan noises or when your computer suddenly starts performing like shit. <laughs> But well, you first want to know exactly what part or parts of your computer are overheating. The usual ones are the CPU, your processor, or the GPU, your graphics card. But having a real bad case airflow can also cause other things to overheat and throttle, like for example your hard drives, most commonly your NVMe ones. But we'll get there. Now, how do you know which parts are the problem? I advise you to download and install a software called HWinfo64, which in my opinion is one of the best software tools that you can get in terms of overall monitoring. You have everything there, from CPU and GPU to motherboard and hard drives, and each one of those have lots of data associated, which is awesome. But if you feel already lost when seeing this much data and you want something simpler, you can simply download MSI Afterburner that comes with RTSS, River Turner Statistics Server, and simply activate it and run a game so you can monitor your CPU and GPU temperatures in real time while gaming. MSI Afterburner is really easy to configure, but if you have problems with it, you have several tutorials online that will easily help you. Although MSI Afterburner will show you your CPU and GPU temperatures by default, if I'm not mistaken. In terms of CPU temperatures, I would say that in a gaming situation, anything past 65 degrees should be taken in consideration. Even more, if your cooler is making a lot of noise to maintain those same 65 degrees. As for GPU temperatures, the core temps can be as high as 75 degrees without a single problem. And you should start worrying a bit when temps go over 80 degrees all the time. Below that, you're fine. Now, if it is the CPU, what can you do? The simple and most effective way for systems that never had maintenance is to open your side panel and clean your CPU cooler. You can do that with a cloth or with compressed air. After that, remove it, check if the plastic protection was taken off before installing the cooler and remove your old thermal paste. For that you can use some paper tissues and some isopropyl alcohol if you're having problems cleaning it. After that just apply your new thermal paste and mount the cooler again. The second option that does not invalidate the first one is to undervolt your CPU. More CPU voltage means more heat and more power draw, so in order to reduce them you can lower your CPU's core voltage to a certain level. This won't out of the box reduce your performance, but it may cause instability, like for example blue screens and immediate shutdowns, if you lower the voltage too much. To lower the voltage you should know the basics of how BIOS and UEFI works. If you don't, ask a friend who does, or watch some tutorials online. The third one is the one where you actually need to spend some money, but it is also actually the simpler and most effective one, which is getting a new CPU cooler. 
usually anything around $30 like the Cooler Master Hyper 212 will do the job for most mainstream CPUs. In case you're using an all-in-one water cooling, I do advise you to check if you have it well positioned and if the fans are in the right place. You can watch the Gamer Nexus video for that. In case you detect that the problem is the GPU, you can do exactly the same things as before. If you have a GPU for more than two years, let's say, maybe you should consider removing and reapplying the thermal paste. This process is a bit harder to do than the CPU one since you have to deal with a bit more screws and of course it will void the warranty given by most brands. You can also undervolt your GPU, which is actually easier than the CPU undervolting, like you can see in some of my undervolting tutorials for the AMD cards I own. A new GPU cooler is also an option, but in most cases, due to pricing, it won't be worth it at all. And this is why, when building a PC, if you're not into a really, really tight budget, you should always look to get a, a decent aftermarket cooler for your CPU, and you should also look into getting a version of the card that you want with a decent cooling system. Try avoiding those extra cheap cooler models, because you will regret it later. Believe me. But well, even with all this done, and taking away the ambient temperature variable, there's still a factor that comes to play an important role when talking about the overall PC temperatures, and it is case airflow. Most people neglect the importance of case airflow, and even more nowadays where people tend to pick a case not due to its features and cooling ability, but instead due to its style. Don't take me wrong, I am a fan of stylish computer cases of course, but not when in terms of importance, style overcomes airflow. This happens mostly with tempered glass cases you see today, mostly the ones with a front tempered glass panel. You can see across the internet how bad the front panel can be to your PC cooling, if not done in the right way. Usually, the cheaper cases with a front tempered glass panel have a very small space in between the fans and the glass, and since the glass has no holes to let the air move properly, like the mesh panels for example, it doesn't matter if you have two, three or 100 fans in the front of your case, because if they have no space to move air decently, they won't, and your case airflow will always be bad. One simple way to see if your front panel airflow is choked is to put your hand in front of the fans and see if you can feel the air flowing in almost every position. If not, then remove your front panel and try again. If the difference in terms of airflow is easily felt and your overall temps come down, then you know you have a problem there. And believe me, a good case airflow makes a huge difference in terms of temperatures. Still inside the case airflow, we have common questions like how many fans, positive or negative airflow. As for the how many fans, I think that if you have a mid or top tower, 5 120 or 140 mm fans will be more than enough, being usually 3 in the front, 1 in the top and the other one in the rear creating a positive airflow. Yeah, I do prefer the positive one since in my experience it is the best. When well balanced, you have almost no dust inside the case after months and the temperatures are pretty good using that same 5 fan setup in a mid tower PC. Also, as for the final tip, let's call it that, if your temperatures are finally good and you want to reduce your computer's noise level, I advise you to go into BIOS and reducing your case fan's RPMs to 1000 or lower, since the difference won't be that much in terms of temperatures, but you'll definitely have a quieter PC. Well guys, a big thank you for watching, really, if you're watching this part, leave in the comment section that you're watching this part, because I really want to see uh, how many of my viewers actually uh, see the end of the video. Thanks a lot one more time, uh, don't forget, hit like, subscribe, <laughs> hit like, subscribe and share this video, and see you in the next one. Possible? Possibly, I mean, possibly um, a new CPU comparison. This time including the i3 10100F. See you in the next video, guys.